Yes. Excellent. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to Richard and Guy for helping me set this up. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for me. And I just hope to share some uh, information with you this evening on the new, uh, all the new items from Marklin. Uh, and I'll reference a few tricks models in the, in the process um, uh, for, for 2021. Um, a couple of weeks ago, the export manager for Marklin um, uh, put on a, a Zoom session uh, for all the dealers. And it was very nice of him to do this because he went through every item in the new items brochure uh, in, in detail, painstaking detail, but, but in a good way uh, to, to go over all the new items. And uh, I tell you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as much as a, of a trained person as a lot of people might think. Uh, I, uh, I enjoy them. I enjoy running them and, and working on them and such, but I really don't know that much about the, the historic uh, significance of a lot of models. And it wasn't until I sat through this four, four hour presentation a couple of weeks ago uh, that I realized how much thought uh, goes into each uh, model that Mark comes out with. It's so easy to take a look and flip through the pages and say, oh, I've got this, I've got that. This is just a repaint of something else. But uh, I'm here to tell you today that uh, a lot of thought goes into every model that uh, Markland selects in the course of the, of the year. Uh, I'll get to the, to the nuts and bolts here in a moment. Uh, uh, you may have noticed that there aren't as many items uh, in, coming out announced for new for 2021 uh, as there have been in prior years. The reason for that is quite simple, as you might guess. Uh, what happened last year uh, took its toll on, on their manufacturing. Uh, there were periods where people uh, couldn't come into work; they had to shut down. Uh, Part suppliers, likewise. So it was it really uh, it was a rough year for them. Uh, but they still managed to get a lot of stuff out. But there's still a lot of stuff, a lot of items that's still waiting to be delivered, uh, and uh, they, they're aware of that, and they know we're aware of that. But uh, uh, it is their intent, and uh, they didn't try to hide the fact that it is their intent that when they announce all the summer items and the fall items, it will be more robust than it has been in prior years in an attempt to make up for the, uh, the, the, the lesser amount of uh, new items that you're seeing this year. Okay. Uh, so much for that. Oh, and I did ask a question because you'll notice uh, those of you who have any interest in the U.S. models. Uh, yes, they know there aren't any U.S. models in the new items brochure, but it is, again, their intent that uh, comes the summertime, uh, there will be some uh, something for the U.S. modelers uh, uh, to, to enjoy. Okay, uh, when I first started this, uh, this whole uh, effort here with, uh, with Richard and Guy helping me along, uh, the intent here is not to just go through every item and tell you all the features and functions and what decoders they have, because you can read that for yourself. For a few of the items, there is some history behind it, but I think that what I'll be able to, to show you here uh, uh, and describe will, will help you uh, understand and appreciate uh, the thought that went into uh, all these models here, because there's just a lot, of neat, a lot of neat things that you just don't know and they just don't have room to, to tell you when they're putting these presentations together. So let's, let's go through it. Uh, we'll get to this particular item. This is the, the new in, insider item for, uh, for 2021, the class 44.5, but we'll get back into that uh, when we see that uh, as I go scroll through the, 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 um, the new items brochure. Okay, very briefly, uh, Marklin, as you know, in, in, a, in, a, in the last few years, Marklin has a lot of the items that they come out with, they're only out and they're only available for a year or two. And, uh, but they also have uh, a good assortment of things that they call their, their Markman classics, things that are always available. So in the first couple of pages here, uh, you'll see the items that, that are in their standard program. They're, they're not limited. They'll be here this year. They'll be here next year uh, and such. So, and they've added, uh, at the very bottom of the page here, you'll see the, the, the class 01, the 39004. That's a new item that they've added to their, their line of standard items. Okay. Uh, the, one of the biggest uh, items in the program this year is their Rhine file 
uh, train. This is a, uh, I'm going to start reading from my presentation here that I typed, that I spent a lot of time typing up here so I can give you all the, all the facts and, uh, and, and figures here. Um, this is, this is an MHI for, for those of you who aren't familiar, this MHI stands for Markman Handler Initiative. It's, it's for people who uh, subscribe to uh, the program where they get one of everything that they come out within the course of the year, but you don't have to subscribe. Most of the times I can get, I can get extras uh, if you, if you uh, sign up, if you, if you ask me early to get them for you. Uh, and, um, uh, uh, I'll get to that uh, in more, more, uh, more details in a moment. Uh, many of you have or you're familiar with the, uh, the, uh, the rail Zeppelin. Uh, they're coming out with this one, as you can see at the top of the page in their classic style box. It's the same tooling as they've had before, the same plastic body, uh, but it's got all new technology inside. Uh, it's going to have new headlights, red marker lights, lots of sounds, and... Uh, Obviously, there's a, there's a lot of historical significance to, to the Germans for this particular model. Uh, this is, I believe, the third one they've come out with. There was an analog one uh, many years ago. Then there was a, a Delta version. This one, as you can see, is going to be fully digital with all the, the bells and whistles. Okay. The, uh, pardon me, my, I got an itchy finger here on my mouse wheel. Uh, this is the Rhine file, uh, which is considered uh, to be the, the little sister, uh, as it was described to us, of the Rhine gold. Um, this ran from uh, Holland down to down the Rhine to Basel. And in the 1950s, uh, it was actually designed to be a, a high end version with a, a completely uh, first class uh, arrangement here. So all these cars are first class cars. It was a, a high priced. Um, High, high price tickets, uh, like first class service uh, for, for the whole, the entire train. Uh, this particular car set has a new version of the dome car. You can see that here at the car on the right. Let me get down there. Uh, in, in the previous models, they, they couldn't, they couldn't or didn't uh, uh, have the technology to light the dome part itself. Uh, the original version of this car just had lights at the ends of the dome. This, the, the person who put on this presentation made a big issue of this, uh, but the dome itself wasn't illuminated. This one does have a much nicer interior, uh, so that the entire, uh, the entire car is lit nicely. At the end car, there's going to be marker lights, and uh, this is uh, one of two, two sets for the train. There's this three-car set, and then there's the two-car set, which has the uh, the, the, the classic dining room with the, the, high, the high roof, as you can see on top, and another, a second, an additional uh, first class car. And the dining car has a decoder, uh, which controls all the lighting, table lamps, uh, lots of sounds of, you know, you've, you've heard this stuff before, but, you know, waiter, waiter noises in the kitchen, people screaming at each other and, and that type thing. Um, but this is uh, this 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 arrangement that you see here with the five cars is very typical, very prototypical for the era uh, that it's modeled for. And here you see the um, uh, the, uh, the 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 locomotive that would be pulling this. This is the the class E ten point twelve. And before I get into the details or the historical significance of this, I want you to notice the blue the blue and cream color because Martha's come out or there have been other trains that had a blue and cream color, but this particular blue, what they call a cobalt blue, is actually different than the blue that other other trains have. They they wanted this particular train to be distinguished and and, and noticeable, uh, not just because it was a first class car, first class service, and everything, but it, but as well as the the, the color, uh, the particular color of blue that they selected for it. This is what they call the, the pants crease uh, train, uh, uh, which was designed, again, we're going back, you know, <laughs> more than half a century here, but it was designed with an aerodynamic front for a more, a more efficient operation. Uh, it was first run in uh, 1963 uh, uh, to, to pull this train. And let's see, what else do I have here? Um, I told you about that special paint scheme. And uh, yeah, later, later, 
Deutsche Bahn trains actually had a, a lighter colored blue. This is a darker, a darker color. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay, oh, this is interesting. Uh, you know, you see this, you say, oh, it's just another rail car. I've got a billion of them. Uh, these little rail cars were typically used to connect uh, small railroads to bigger cities. Uh, but if you notice uh, at the bottom of this, uh, if any of you guys are uh, watch the, um, have been watching the, uh, the Monday uh, evening ETE um, presentations, uh, somebody did a, a presentation not too long ago about this Inducy system, which is a, a magnetic system uh, which actually operates underneath the uh, locomotive and it was installed to automatically slow the train if it was detected, detected that they were going too fast. And this particular uh, model that Marco has put together here is a replica of the actual car that was designed to test the technology of this system when it was first introduced. So it's, it is different. You can tell from the, the lettering on the side of the car, there is something special about it. It is a little bit different than any of the models you already have. So what the, the Deutsche Bahn did was they took uh, um, a rail car and, and put it this one here into service to, to test the, uh, the, the, the functionality of this Inducy, this magnetic system. Uh, it, was, it was not considered a maintenance car. If it had been, it would have been yellow uh, or a different you know, special color as, as they do for all maintenance vehicles. But uh, because it was actually used for, for regular service, uh, they kept it in its, in its classic red uh, uh, paint scheme. So, and as such, it's not, it's not designated as a VT 95.9, it's called a class 724. That's what we were told. Okay, let's see. Alrighty, next page here. Okay, there's a bunch of uh, Shuko vehicles here. This is the second year uh, that Markland has introduced uh, their MHI version, if you will, uh, for Shuko items as well, which means limited production and availability. Um, the, uh, but there's a nice selection of products here. Everything from up in the upper left here, this the little Piccolo, that's a one to 90 scale. So uh, it's uh, not, uh, uh, so I guess close, close to Asia, but not, but not quite. Um, there's a set of military items if you're into that type of stuff. And uh, what else? There's a Porsche 914 here. Uh, VW Buck. Uh, this uh, this is for one scale type items here. These last two in the lower right. They've got a VW Beetle and uh, and a van here for uh, for the with the uh, printing on it for the fire department. Okay, here we go. This is the Insider model for 2021. Um, if you're familiar with the original uh, Class 44 locomotive, that had a, a uh, the, 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 it had like snouts on the end of it, uh, sort of like the, the German crocodile. Um, but uh, this is a different, this is a whole really different model. Um, as you can see, it doesn't have the, the it, it's, it's squared at the ends. Uh, the prototype here was originally put out uh, for bid, we were told, uh, to several companies and Siemens and AEG uh, came out with several different designs with, uh, and they made eight different models with the, the, the road numbers of 44.501 to 44.508. And this is, as you could, this, this has a road number of 507, if you can, if you can see that on the screen. So this is just one of the models that they, that they selected uh, to put into service. Uh, if you notice down here, the whole, the, 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 the purpose for designing this was to make it a, a more efficient, uh, uh, less fuel consuming or power consuming uh, 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 locomotive because Siemens and AEG were working on at the time, uh, trying to make much more efficient motors. And these, these little holes that you see here, that was actually put in there to, to believe it or not, to reduce the weight of the locomotive. Uh, it had special uh, stabilizers installed, special braking system and lots of innovations uh, for, for that point in time. And, uh, all eight of these models uh, eventually ended up running out of Munich. It was considered to be a regional locomotive going to places such as uh, uh, Freilassing and Berchtesgarten, those on the 
uh, the east side of Germany, a little bit north, a little bit south of, of Salzburg. Uh, in the model, the pantographs go up and down. What's very interesting here, the, uh, the cars here on the, on the car set, uh, there we go. Um, these actually come with, you can see here, they have figures inside. The, the car set comes with 30 different figures, interior lights, marker lights, and this was this 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 arrangement of cars we were told is very prototypical. You can see these two cars in the front are are, are different than the two in the back. Back in those days, this was just after the war, and the German rail was pretty much putting anything on the rails they could get. So even though this this, this looks like kind of like a, a mishmash of, of different uh, cars put together, this is we were told uh, to be prototypical. Uh, what you have here, the fruit, these two cars are compartment cars. And then we have these, what they call the Donnerbuschen cars, because uh, uh, that, that, that means in German that the, the, like thunder cars, because they were made of metal and they were very, very loud inside. And then you have the baggage car here, which as I already said, has marker lights. Okay, so here's some more of the details. Um, Okay, well, I'm just going to blow through this pretty quickly. They've got uh, some of the startup items here. Uh, the Harbor Logistics uh, theme. This is a new locomotive in their in their in their startup line. A little. Uh, oh, I, I was told you can take this. You can put your give your kids the little boat here, and it goes and it'll it'll float in the bathtub. Okay. <laughs> some of the the starter little starter sets with the uh, the plastic rail and i believe the the and the infrared con, uh, controller they obviously they've tailored this for the very very the young children okay uh here we have an auto carrier uh, i'm trying to see what the significance of this is but uh, uh all right, I'll just go through this. It's just an auto transport car with some Porsche vehicles, a nice Porsche vehicle. What's that, Richard? It was Rogers. It's a good Porsche. Everyone's Porsche. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. You say everybody loves Porsches. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's for sure. All right. Um, Superheroes. Okay, Markland has a, a, a good relationship. They've established a very good relationship here with Warner Brothers, uh, who I guess own DC Comics. So they're coming out with this new, this new line of superheroes uh, uh, um, trains. It's got uh, the locomotive there with Superman and uh, all these other characters that uh, I'm not familiar with, but. Uh, I'm sure it's entertaining for, for kids and the comic book characters. Uh, okay, it says, it shows here, Superman. I don't know who, oh, there's Batman. Those are the only ones that I'm familiar with. Uh, there's a Superman car. And uh, uh, you can see this, it's this, this has a green kryptonite marker light on it, uh, which, uh, which actually works. And there's a Batman car here. And at the top, uh, there's the bat, the, the bat signal, I guess, uh, uh, the light, uh, there's a light that comes on and, and, and you know, you can see that the bat signal going through the, the roof. Uh, Aquaman, I think that was probably after my time, so I'm not familiar with Aquaman. Um, anyhow, back, back to the real thing here. Um, okay, if you notice on these cars, these have doors in the middle. This is what they call their middle entrance cars. Uh, it's the first time they've come out with these uh, with an era three paint scheme and the uh, um, let's see here there's a first second class car a second class car and a third second class car uh, cab control car so it's going to have uh, uh, interior lights uh, in, in, in these uh, to make them very nice and to go with that this is a uh, the class 78 locomotive, which is last year was the first year that Markman came out with this, this particular uh, model class 78 uh, for, uh, for era four. This, this is a newer version. This is era three, which you can tell uh, because it's got the, the different uh, uh, 
this, this is the older version before they had the computerized numbering system where you have the class and then a sequence number and then a dash and a check digit. This has the old numbering scheme. That's why this is an error three locomotive. And uh, this was actually one of the first local historical significance of this is that it was, this is one of the first locomotives to be used in push pull operation. Again, if you notice the, the three cars set here, this last car uh, not only had marker lights, but this was actually, even though it doesn't have the slanted end that you're familiar with for the newer, uh, for trains that are running today, uh, this was actually a cab control car and the engineer would run in here and the train would run backward, uh, backwards, uh, most, not most of the time, but probably about half the time. Okay, you may notice that these, uh, the numbers 41310, 41320 and 41330 are, uh, again, these are more middle entrance cars. These are the same item numbers that Marklin has had before in their program, but they, uh, uh, but these all have new road numbers. So if you have an existing train and you want to enlarge it, this would be the way to, to do it. Just add, add, add some of these cars on here. Okay, earlier I referred to this particular locomotive, this class 01, this is a new one in there what they call their classic assortment, which means it'll be available all the time. Uh, the, it'll stay in the program for a number of years. Uh, very classic locomotive for passenger trains. And as you can see, it comes with an FX decoder and lots of sound functions, lights, uh, like 30 different functions. Okay, this is the class 50 six locomotive uh, originally uh, um, of Prussian construction in the north and northeast part of Germany before World War II, uh, running around in areas uh, in that area and in Poland. Uh, this particular model has a lot, lot of uh, newer details uh, than the previous class 56, which Marshall made. It's got little, little extra handrails on it that weren't on there before. And, and a lot more little details that make it uh, a little more authentic looking than the previous version Markman had. Okay, here we go. This is the class 043. Uh, in the, around 1969, 1970, the German railroad decided to change the, the, the numbering scheme of, the, of their locomotives to this new uh, so-called computerized system. Now, uh, if you're familiar with the, the Long Henry train, there's a little picture of it there in the upper, upper right of the of this page, uh, where they would double head these things. There were actually oil-fired and coal-fired locomotives. So what they did was they took the class, but previously they they were all class 44 locomotives. You will notice this is an O43. Originally, they had steam and oil-fired locomotives, then they were both class, called class 44. So when they went to this new numbering screen, numbering scheme, uh, this new computerized numbering scheme, what they did was they took the oil fired class 44s and renumbered them 043 and kept the old coal fired class 44s and made them 044s. So that way, if you saw an 043, you just knew it was oil. And if you saw an 044, you knew it was Coal, but uh, this is a very popular locomotive. They built uh, uh, over 2,500 of them uh, before, during, and even after the war. They 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 rebuild them from parts. So it was just a very popular locomotive uh, for 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 hauling uh, uh, coal and, and 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 similar goods. Um, let's see this. Oh. Uh, one of the notes notations here is there, there actually was a class 43 locomotive, but that ran in the 1920s, which was a, a two cylinder locomotive. So uh, they felt that by numbering this 043, there, this would, there wouldn't be any confusion. But uh, I, I just found it interesting that uh, how they changed all these numbers to make it easier to identify uh, locomotives when they went to this new computerized uh, numbering scheme. I hope I'm not boring you guys too much. <laughs> uh, but this is the, the Long Henry locomotive, which would haul uh, ore from typically from Bremerhaven to Hamburg uh, to the middle part of, uh, in, of, of uh, Germany, from the industrial part of Germany to the steel mills, uh, sometimes over 4,000 tons at, at one time. 
And a lot of times they would actually put together an 044 uh, coal and an 043 oil fired uh, locomotive together. And uh, uh, later on in the 1970s, they ran these up into the 1970s apparently when they then switched over to a diesel and ultimately uh, eventually electric. Uh, this particular train, not with these locomotives of course, but this particular train hauling ore again uh, is these days is typically pulled by two class 189 electric locomotives. Now, uh, there's something interesting. He, this is a car set. They, I think it's a 12 car set that they're coming out with. Um, how many does it say here? Yeah, 12 car set. Okay, you see what this says, Ertz 3D. Well, there actually is an Ertz 1D and an Ertz 2D. And what makes the difference uh, in these cars is, uh, if you notice here, there are like different levels uh, in the car, okay? Well, the Ertz 1D cars would only get filled to this level and the Ertz 2D cars would only get filled to the middle level and the Ertz 3D cars, they get filled to the top. That's what was explained to us. So uh, I found that to be, uh, to, to be interesting. And of course the, 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 the 3D cars, because they were carrying or designed to carry so much weight had to be built with much uh, uh, heavy, more heavy duty uh, wheel trucks. Uh, so it'd be much sturdier to carry the, the extra load. And in case you have a real big layout, you can add a six car set with tricks, of course, all with different road numbers. So you could have up to 18 different cars, each one with a different road number. Okay. This is a class 194. Uh, this is the era four version of the class 194. And we were told that some of these are uh, still actually used uh, in museums for you know, little, little, little excursions and such. This is not the same uh, 194 that you may have. This one's completely new tooling as it says here. And uh, even though this has been in the Markland program since the 1960s, this is a total Totally new model, lots of details, digital sound, etc. And some of the details that were pointed out to us here, including uh, uh, this little this little uh, wire here, if you noticed, uh, that uh, runs down from the pantographs down here and then goes to the to the headlights. Uh, this this is this is significant, and I'll, I'll try to explain later why why that is, and. Uh, there's a, also we were told something about uh, uh, a brake a brake light uh, that was in here as well, if I'm not mistaken. So it does have a lot of new features that the original ones don't have. And to pull this, uh, uh, to go with this train, uh, a set of prototypical uh, cars, this this Palaner Brow Munchen car uh, is a particular note because this this is a model of a real car. Uh, Palaner apparently has had at this time uh, its own fleet of, of cars for hauling their beer around the country. And uh, let's see here. Uh, I've got to refer to my notes here because I don't remember everything. Uh, because many of these cars, many of the beer cars that Markland has made over the years had what they call fantasy paint schemes. They weren't, they weren't, they were for real beers but there really weren't cars in, in, in the fleet or on the railroads that looked like those. They were just, they just had the emblems of, uh, of, the, of the brewery on them. But this is a model of a real car. And uh, one of the significant things about this particular one is when we get to the very end of the, of the, of the talk here, uh, the Insider car for this year for the Markham Club Insider members will be another one of these. Uh, it'll just look a little bit different, but this is actually a model of a real car. Okay, uh, this uh, V280 uh, uh, locomotive is uh, something that would be used mostly for local or regional use. Uh, it wasn't very popular, apparently it wasn't very popular with the people who were, were driving it and parts were hard to find. And by the 1980s, uh, we were told this was, it was phased out completely. Uh, this was originally a V80, then renumbered to be a, a, a class 280 locomotive. Uh, but this one has telex couplers and, and, and sounds uh, which previous models did not have. Okay, 
this is a rerun of uh, a bunch of TEE cars from uh, uh, that they had a couple of years ago, but again, all with new numbers. Uh, apparently, uh, this is the 50th anniversary of the intercity, uh, which would be inner city IC trains are normally used for connecting large cities to each other. Uh, again, like the Rhinefile train, all these cars are first class cars. And uh, here you've got uh, some of the cars. Here's the dining car with the pantograph, etc. Okay, moving right along. We have some gondola cars uh, from around the 1960s. And you've seen this car here many times, many places, I'm sure. But this is a new one. I think it's their third or fourth version uh, with, a, with a different road number. OK, three. OK, I'm trying to keep pace here. This is, uh, this would be considered the, the sister of the, of the 194. This is the, the East German or, uh, or Deutsche Reichsbahn uh, version of the uh, of the German crocodile of the 194 I showed you earlier. Uh, this is uh, as of 1994, we were told. The, the paint schemes that were used in East Germany were, were different obviously than the DB was using in West Germany. Uh, this one has a dark green body, the red uh, trucks, the black frame and such. Uh, and uh, this, was, this was in use through, through the through the 1970s uh, until, the, until, the, until the war came down, but uh, we we're told it's still used for museum tourist type runs here. And uh, let's see, I made some more notes here. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a set of, uh, there's a set of three uh, coal cars here that would be prototypical to go with this uh, that they have under the Trix program. But of course, if, uh, if you're interested in those, they can we can swap out the wheels to put AC wheels of that if you'd like. Uh, I have to admit, this is probably one of my favorites. Uh, there's no toy fair this year, but uh, this year Markland is, uh, as every year, they've announced a, a toy fair quote locomotive. And as they've done in every year past, the toy fair locomotive that they come out with has a what they call a fantasy paint scheme. There, there was never a 103 that looked like this. But it being the, the 50th anniversary of the intercity service, they decided to take a 103, I guess because everybody likes, not almost everybody likes a 103, and, and put this intercity um, uh, you know, white paint scheme with the red stripe uh, to each his own. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, if you'll notice the, uh, uh, or if you remember last fall as part of the fall assortment announcements, the Markman uh, came out with uh, eight different cars, compartment cars, uh, first class, second class cars, open seating cars, a control car. So, uh, uh, and at the same time, they came out with a class 120 locomotive with this same paint scheme, but that's not a fantasy paint. That's, they do have a class 120 with that inner city paint scheme. I still think the, the 103 pulling this looks pretty cool myself. I uh, just want to remind everybody, if anybody's interested, this has been a very popular, I have a lot of people have asked me to get this for them. So there's only 2,499 pieces being made. So if anybody wants one, uh, I would just encourage you to, to, to get it. Uh, these look like the same cars you've seen in the program before, but they're not because um, this has different, uh, I'm going to read my notes here. Uh, these are, uh, the previous cars that looked like this were Era 5. These are have a new paint scheme, uh, although I have to admit the, the difference is probably pretty subtle, but apparently these have an Era, paint, an era 6 paint scheme with new lettering and, of course, new road numbers, and they've, they've changed the, the region. You, you, you can't read it here, but obviously every car has what they call here these, these destination boards on them, and these reflect uh, uh, the tubing and uh, the train and which runs an area near Geppingen uh, with a first second class car the yellow stripe here as you know means first class a second class car and then another second class car with a cab control uh, at the end the uh, I made myself a note here this is when I go to Germany and I stay in Stuttgart and go to Geppingen this would be these would be the cars that I ride in so I, that's uh, I think that's pretty cool uh, 
this is the uh, class uh, 143 electric uh, um, locomotive uh, that you would use to pull with it. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, this was originally, uh, I, I believe, uh, uh, an East German design, but they've got, they got many of these things uh, uh, running through the country now. Okay, uh, set of uh, wooden stake cars with loads. And Trix has a set also, I believe, that with different road numbers. So you can actually make yourself a, a, a set of six cars. If you notice, each car is just a little bit different uh, than, than the other. And this is the Ludmilla, which definitely was originally of, of East German origin. Uh, I believe it may be even Russian. Uh, this was introduced into, into East Germany in the 1970s. But they had over 600 of these uh, running at the time that the wall came down in 1989. And upon reunification, uh, the DBAG kept these because they were the most powerful diesels that they had in service. It was more powerful than what the, the DB was running. Uh, Ro Robert, yes. they're, they're, they're definitely Russian. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 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 I, I, I remember the first time I saw one of these, you know, the first time you see something that... Uh, that you've only seen pictures of before, uh, you get that kind of feeling, you know, they're pretty cool. Uh, this is a big locomotive, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, so uh, uh, West Germany had a few V300s, uh, exper experimental versions uh, at, the, at the time that the wall came down, but they still weren't as, uh, as powerful as this. So they kind of ditched the, the whole idea of the V300s and, and they were and, and still are using this very powerful locomotive. Uh, like I said, this, is, this has ERA 6 uh, lettering and apparently they've got a 13 digit, these things have 13 digit numbers on them. Uh, now, uh, of, of interest here, before you say, well, I've seen so many Ludmillas before, what's the big deal about this one? If you notice here, you see the, the white front, okay? This is what they call the Dutch version, why? because uh, while about 80% of these are running in Germany, um, there are a lot of these running in, in Holland, in the Netherlands. And apparently the law, the law in, in Holland is that uh, every locomotive has to have this white front in, 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 in it on it because that their logic, their reasoning being, this makes it uh, easier for people to see if a train is coming. So anytime you see a locomotive with this white front on it, even if it's from Germany or another country, it's, it's been designed and painted. So it will be legal uh, being able to run in, in Holland. So I found that to be uh, kind of interesting. So uh, this one was uh, at least the, the program here is designed to pull uh, our uh, uh, the wooden cars, but uh, they also have designed to, to put, to pull, uh, as you'll see here, they also have a model here uh, to pull the, these new military cars. Uh, these, uh, the, these, uh, these new cars, there's a, uh, an older paint scheme here with the brown. Uh, these have howitzers on them. This is, the, the military stuff isn't my thing, but I know it interests a lot of people. So I do want to spend a few, a few moments on these. Uh, this is car has the brown paint scheme, so it's an older paint scheme, uh, but but it is still current. And this has the darker paint scheme. Uh, these models are made obviously by Shuko, uh, which uh, kind of helps helps them. And uh, we have a couple of more cars here. Uh, I want to make sure I don't lose my place here in the notes. Um, hmm. Uh, a couple of private, uh, oh, private, uh, oh, yeah, private DB cars, yeah. Uh, the DB owns some of these these military, these flat cars, and the, some of these are privately owned uh, cars. So, uh, the, and, and they, they run them both with uh, different different military loads on them. So uh, that's uh, that all I can say about that. This one, uh, these two cars here apparently were designed in the 1950s and are still in service. One has an M113 transport tank on it, uh, which we were told is actually a U.S. design. I find that kind of interesting. <laughs> the U.S. The, the Germans are now using U.S. design uh, military vehicles, but whatever. Okay. 
Okay, this is this is uh, the 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 new item we were told for uh, uh, for this year. This is the Unimet ballast tamping machine. Uh, it's uh, manufacturer is a company called Placer and Toyer, uh, and one of the one of the uh, there's so many interesting things about this. I don't I don't know how much of it is is in here. This is just talking about the model, but there, there's so much. Uh, so much interesting. First of all, this is being made in conjunction with Wiesman, but this isn't just an item that they gave to Wiesman and say, here, Wiesman, you just build this for us. There's been apparently a lot of uh, interaction uh, between Wiesman and Markland to, to make this a, 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 a unique model. The body is all, um, uh, is all metal, I were told. And uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, completely metal body, which is something actually new for Wiesman, because in the past, Markman would just tell Wiesman, oh, just build us a three, mail, a three rail version of what you've got here. This is from the ground up, totally designed. It's a nice die cast body with the bright paint scheme, as you can see, uh, completely digital. It's got cab lights, running lights, pantograph sounds and everything. Now in real life, in real life, this actually operates in two modes. When the pantograph is uh, up, it's going uh, for long distances. But when it's doing its actual tamping job, uh, it's th that they bring the pantograph down and, and they run it as, uh, in, with diesel fuel. And the interesting thing is when you have the pantograph up and you have the sound on, you will get electric locomotive sounds. When you have the pantograph down and you're moving the locomotive, you will get diesel sounds. So uh, I, that's, uh, I thought that's kind of interesting. And uh, uh, the whole idea here was that uh, uh, typically you would, um, you would have the pantograph up to move the, the, the whole thing from one location to another at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour, we were told. Then you get to the destination and you run at a very slow speed so it can do its, its tamping thing to push the ballast uh, the down. And it would only run at a, much, at a very slow speed of like five to six kilometers per hour to do its tamping thing. And this, you can do the tamp, you can do the, the tamping simulation here apparently also as part of the, the digital operation. So this is a pretty neat model, I think. Uh, if you remember a few moments ago, well, when we were talking about the, um, the Long Henry locomotives, the class uh, 40, uh, 043 and 044, and I told you that these days that same train is running, hauling the ore uh, from Bremerhaven to to the steel mills. They doublehead these 189s, and they run, and this is what's pulling those same loads today. Uh, this is a brand new version. Uh, if you'll notice, it has four pantographs. Uh, the um, because uh, different different countries have different voltage requirements, as I'm sure many of you know. And uh, Markland's apparently put a lot of money invested in new, in new uh, highly detailed pantographs. And this is uh, one of the first models to, to exhibit that. Because if you look closely, which you may not be able to see necessarily here in the pictures here, each one of these four pantographs is different from the rest because they have to su support uh, uh, catenary systems in Poland, the Netherlands, uh, Italy and Austria, Croatia and Germany, which includes the, the German version includes Switzerland and Denmark. So um, the, the whole idea of this is so that you can have one locomotive that can run pretty much all over Europe. So again, I, th I think the, 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 the having four different pantographs here, and you can actually see here, it shows you which, which, uh, which countries that would, this would be designed to, to run in. Okay. Uh, we have a, a little beer car here as part of their uh, annual uh, um, uh, beer car. They always have a, a low end uh, beer car here. This is for Bowringer. And let's see here. Uh, oh, this is, a, this is a four axle on rail, what they call the company, uh, uh, lease, a private leasing company on rail. Uh, they're using new tooling here from a few years ago with a current paint scheme. And there's another version available from Trix as well, with a different road number, of course. Uh, because so many different, uh, the same cars run over so many different uh, countries, uh, they, you, you notice the, 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 the Europe, European, the EU flag here, uh, we're getting into the part of the, of the program here where the, um, 
they were going to go have specific uh, items for different countries, like for France and Italy and, and such. But uh, there, there are some cars that just cross you know, country boundaries. So they've got this new class of service that they're calling freight service right across Europe. And, and to introduce that here, um, they've got this set of Wascosa, which is one of the largest leasing companies uh, for rail cars in Europe. And they're actually a Swiss company, but they register their cars in Holland. So in the Netherlands, so, you know, what, 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 what category should this be? Should it be Swiss because the leasing companies in Switzerland or should it be in, in, in the Netherlands because that's where they register the cars. So they've got these things all, they just, they're not assigning a particular country to these. And if you've been to Germany, you've seen, you can see freight trains and they've got cars from Italy and Switzerland. They've got cars from just about every country you could think of always on the same train. Uh, these cars here at the bottom, these Anaco cars would uh, typically be hauling steel, uh, loads of steel coils uh, around Europe. Okay, uh, we have a couple of double container cars here. If you notice here with metal trucks here, uh, there's one for, um, one has loads, one doesn't. This would be uh, typically used uh, uh, as uh, ships come into the harbor and these uh, uh, containers would go on, uh, uh, they could handle up to 80, up to, up to two 80 foot uh, containers uh, uh, used for local or regional use. But because these cars are together, you could actually um, uh, use, uh, put up to, they said up to 90 or 105 foot uh, containers on, on a pair of these cars. Uh, and you say, well, why do they have one car with, um, of course, the uh, P and O Ned Lloyd and Hapek Lloyd. Lloyd, these are these are these are Dutch Dutch companies. Uh, well, P and O and Ned Lloyd is is a is Dutch company. Hapek Lloyd uh, is a German shipping company, and uh, it, uh, the the person who put on this presentation went to great length to say, well, why do we have one here with no loads on it? Well, apparently, uh, some people complain that uh, the loads that Markland was putting on here were uh, were a little on the cheap side, and they didn't want to pay a lot of money to have better loads on. So Markland decided, well, let's put a, a, a set of cars here. People can put their own loads on. They can put on whatever they want, and that way they don't think that they're paying too much, and they won't think that they're getting cheap loads on them. And uh, you know, a lot of people buy containers, and they have nowhere to put them. So having a set of cars here uh, that are empty uh, was designed to you know, make it so people could just do their own thing. OK, let's see. Richard, how are we doing on time? Are we okay or? Um, I was, I was going to give you a, like another five minutes and then maybe have five minutes for questions. Okay, for fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I can, I can run through you because we're, we're just about, we're just about, uh, I, th I think we're just about, we're okay. just about done here. Uh, got some deep well flat cars here. And uh, I can, I can run through this pretty quickly here. Uh, this car has been in the program, this hopper car for many years. Uh, it's got a new road number. Uh, here we've got the, uh, the, the class AE362 uh, uh, Swiss locomotive. And just trying to, trying to stay here with my notes here. Um, I got ahead of myself, I apologize. Um, okay, I've already got, okay let's, let's just go. Switzerland. Okay, here we are. Uh, old tooling, but an updated digital decoder. Uh, the notes that I have for uh, for this locomotive here, and for the the next one, uh, as a uh, new tooling from last year, uh, but now in an Era Three paint scheme uh, with a new new light configuration, uh, different roof equipment, etc., uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, the other major model, other than the, the tamping machine here, is the uh, the, the Churchill Arrow. Uh, completely new tool, tooling. No other manufacturer makes this. Uh, in real life, there was only one of them, which might make you wonder why Markman actually put one out, because they'll probably only, <laughs> they'll only be able to produce this once. But it's uh, it a very historical uh, 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 significance. OK. Here we have a new BLS Boyd. Is it, Boyd Mysterio is going to want one of these, I think. Uh, class 465 for, for the BLS, 
uh, often used in a double heading operation to haul freight uh, over the Alps. Uh, this car has been uh, uh, produced many times before, obviously this time a different road number. Um, the class 421, uh, which is uh, uh, this one, what, what I did not mention before about the class 143 locomotive is that it, that it's actually a new design. It has a centrally located locomotive uh, motor. So all four, all four axles are driven. Uh, same with this uh, Swiss cargo locomotive. This is a new design with a centrally mounted motor, again, to give it more, more traction, more pulling power with all the axles being driven. Uh, this is a class 66, uh, updated from the class 77, which is uh, actually coming out of the UK, but now it's running all over Europe. Uh, this is a, a cross rail version with a Swiss paint scheme. You can see the, the Swiss uh, cross there. Okay, uh, some more Swiss cars here. An add-on for the panorama set from last year, but this car does not have lights. Uh, but lights can be added to it easily enough. Uh, some, some flat cars here where people can put their own vehicles on. Uh, this is the first time they've ever made an Austrian crocodile. And uh, I'll get to my notes here. And uh, a very iconic locomotive. Uh, and uh, it's a, Markland admitted that there's been a noticeable gap in their, in their program until now. So this, this would complete the selection of crocodiles for, for Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. Uh, this is an Era 4 version with lots of new features. Um, with the, they, they pointed out a little box here in the front. It's new, completely new uh, design for the crocodile. I think, it, I think it looks pretty nice. I'm going to scroll through here quickly because I really do want to get to the end of it. A couple of new uh, Austrian passenger cars. This one, I got to spend a minute on. Uh, this is the TGV. I've been on this particular train uh, a number of times. It goes from Paris to Munich, it goes from Paris. It stops in uh, Strasbourg, Karlsruhe, uh, Stuttgart, and, uh, and uh, Munich. Uh, it's a very cool train, bi-level cars and everything. Uh, the, the set itself comes as a four unit train and you can buy three extra sets of uh, two cars to go with it. Um, there's a, I think there's first class car, second class, and probably a dining car in there as well. Uh, a new Dutch 1200 locomotive. Uh, again, this is different than what you've seen before. Uh, it's had more, it has more, uh, a lot more details, more prototypical uh, uh, ventilation system on the side. Has, a, has this white light here in the front which I'm not quite sure what it's for, but uh, it's there. Um, they've, had this, they've had these cars before a couple of times in the program. This is the first time they've had a five car set. So if you have a couple of these cars already, uh, you, can, you can add them to what you already have. A little old time tank car here. This is a new two car set to go with what Marklin introduced last year, what they call their surprise locomotive. It's a beautiful Belgian class one uh, steam locomotive. And there was a four car set to go with it. Uh, part of the new items here this year is a couple of first class, a first and a first second class car. Uh, they've never had anything quite like this before. And this would complete the train to make a very prototypical six car train. Okay, this is a double set of uh, for the Belgian uh, railroad. This is what they actually use. Believe it or not, these are always double-headed, even when they're not being used for what their, their main purpose is. And their main purpose, believe it or not, is to haul ice trains and uh, uh, ICE trains and TGVs and taluses when they break down. Uh, so uh, obviously when an electric train breaks down, you need something to haul it out. And what they do is they put two of these together and, uh, and, and they, they haul the train to the nearest station where it can get uh, repaired. But even when they're not in that particular service, apparently they're always uh, coupled together. Uh, obviously one of these is, is, is a dummy, but it was pointed out that uh, the, the dummy 
also has a pickup shoe, so the lights will work uh, in the direction of travel. If it's being pushed, uh, it'll be white, and if it's being pulled, it'll be red. Okay, a um, couple. Of, there's going to actually a couple more robo uh, cars. Of apparently the the um, the uh, the people in Luxembourg. Uh, are big, uh, they have a lot of uh, good customers in Luxembourg, so they always have something in the program. Here's a set of five cars and a Robo Crane to go for Luxembourg, uh, a class 142 uh, locomotive, and a couple of flat cars here for Italy, uh, Denmark, a new set of hinged roof uh, tank cars. And even though these look like they're just coupled together, which they are, they never, in, in real life, they never even come apart in real life, that this is just the way they were designed to run like this. Here's a set of five double, double cars, makes a nice car set. Uh, some more military items here, a robo crane uh, for maintenance. And uh, I do have to speak a moment about this. I, I saw, I saw not too long ago, I don't know if it was on the Smithsonian or the National Geographic channel, uh, I saw these cars and I saw this locomotive running. There was a whole uh, half hour, maybe it was an hour program on, on how they uh, cut down wood and, and haul the logs in Sweden. And this, these are the cars they use. It's kind of, kind of neat when you see a model in real use, uh, even if it's on TV. But uh, this is very, very typical uh, of what a, a Swedish train would look like uh, with logs on it, of course. And this is a class 66 locomotive, which is what they would be using for that uh, purpose. Okay, I think we're just about the end here. Uh, this is a, they've actually, um, Martha previously came out with a, a locomotive like this for Norway. But this one, uh, same paint scheme, different road number. This one has, uh, I think the last one of the first one they made uh, was just a Delta version. This one's of course full digital, sounds, telex, couplers, the works. Okay, we did it. Okay, well that's the HO stuff. Um, uh, we don't have time here to do the Z, uh, but what we can do, it'll only take a few seconds, Richard, it'll only take a few seconds to go through the one scale because there aren't, isn't much for the one scale. Here it is. Uh, they only, I, I, again, Marplin's uh, program this year is very, very thin, uh, but they, they do have a beautiful uh, one scale locomotive here uh, that they came out with last year uh, in, um, for the uh, HO people and uh, the Class CE 68. Uh, this is the forerunner, if you will, to all the, all the real crocodiles you can tell from the, the depressed nose here, but the snout, uh, the jack shafts, the same wheel arrangement as a crocodile in, in many respects. If you just extend the nose a little bit, uh, uh, it's, it's a crocodile. And a couple of cars here, a couple of freight cars, container cars here, a couple of gondolas, and that's it. And the, for the mm -hmm. museum cars, uh, they've, they've uh, every year they come out with museum cars uh, for, for a company that's located somewhere in the, the Geppingen region. And this year it's a company called Dick. Uh, apparently they make very, uh, very fine, very good knives, a lot of them by hand. And that's gonna be the museum car for this year, which I've been told we might be able to get. I'm done. Excellent. Thank you so much, Robert. Really I hope I didn't bore everybody just too no, much. Oh, no, it's re very, very interesting. So I, I, yeah, I find it interesting when I when 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 I hear all the, the history and the and 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 the, the way these things run in real life. I just I just find it fascinating. Mm. Oh, have we got all any right. questions for Robert? Have we got oh, the mic good. On? No <laughs> questions. Not not one question. All not right. Much, Everybody's much. asleep. Yeah, I, no, I, I think I, I think on the banks might be looking for a discount. <laughs> What's that? I think I'm, that. I'm I said one or five Swiss, but I was asked that question. I'm so, I'm sorry. Say that again, Roger. I said why no era five Swiss. Oh, <laughs> I, well, uh, again, I think what they're going to do, um, uh, what they're going to do. Uh, in the summer and in the and in the uh, uh, fall announcements, I think they are going to. It, it is again, it's their intent 
to, to come out with a more, a more exhaustive, a more robust selection of, of trains to, uh, of models uh, to offer people than they have in the past because they know that they're, they're short on, on product right now. They, they have to play catch up. I'm not making excuses for them. I'm the last person to make excuses for Markland. But the, the fact of the matter is they're, they're way behind on their deliveries from last year and they're trying to catch up. And if all goes according to plan, they'll, they'll, they'll come out with a bunch of new stuff. Uh, I don't know if there'll be any R5 Swiss, but they're gonna come out with a bunch of new stuff uh, more than they have in the past uh, in, their, in their summer and fall programs. Look forward to it. Yeah. So Robert, are they doing all the locomotives as Trix locomotives or are they just sticking to Markland for locos at the moment? Uh, well, I obviously I don't didn't have a chance to to get to the tricks to the trick stuff, but if you if you look in the in the, in the tricks uh, new items brochure, you will see a lot of models. Uh, yeah. Actually, it, it, even in the Markman HO, when they refer to you can you can they, the tricks has the as a similar version available. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yes, there there is a, there is a there, there's not as wide a range. Uh, for, for the for the tricks for the two rail stuff is the Marklin, yeah. but a lot of the models you see in the in the uh, three rail version are available as two rail models from tricks yes right and of course any of the, any of the cars any of the Marklin cars can be used on a two rail system and and uh, you know a lot of people often they just uh, they, they put off uh, even looking or thinking about the tricks uh, cars because they make a lot of freight cars. Sometimes there are, there are cars in the Trix program that are not available in the Markman program. Many of them are duplicates, but they have different road numbers for some people who like to build what they call unit trains, which is trains that have a lot of the same type of car, but they want it to be more authentic looking. So they want, uh, you know, different road numbers. Uh, they, 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 they've been making a good effort in the last few years to make sure that the Trix ones and the Markman ones, now that they have these new printing things where they can just change, make a very small change and all of a sudden put different numbers on the car, that's easy for them and it makes it, uh, makes it more enjoyable for everybody. Are, are they still making locos in uh, Germany or uh, in Hungary or are they offshore everything to China these days? Oh no, most of the stuff is made in either Germany or Hungary. I think most yeah. of the stuff is made in Hungary. Yeah. Uh, and a good part of it, very little is made in China. I, I, I do hear it when people, people get a locomotive. Why didn't you tell me it was gonna uh, you know, come from China? Because they don't tell me in advance. However, with that yeah. said, if anybody's ever worried or concerned, if they want something that does not, if they don't want something that comes from China, all you have to do is ask. I will find out. Mark was very, very forthcoming with that. Uh, a few years ago, I guess I can say now, a few years ago, they sent me a list of where they get all their parts from. And, and, and yeah. it would amaze you. Yeah. It would amaze you. They get parts from probably a hundred different companies around the world uh, where the final manufacturing is done, of course, is either Germany, Hungary, or China. Mm -hmm. But lately, very, very little comes out of China. Uh, but if anybody ever has a concern, if you say, oh, I want this, but only if it's not coming out of China, I'll be more than happy to find out for you and let mm -hmm. you know so you can make a decision. That's not a problem. Oh, it's not that I've got anything particular. It's just I was we, I, I was doing some stuff for a friend, uh, my friend Sean here for BMO, and his brand new BMO coaches are now coming out of China, which is quite surprised oh. me because they're yeah. actually very much West German. Sorry, German. I've, I've never yeah. had quite honestly. I've never had a problem with any of the items that came out of China. Yeah. I've never. Uh, I had one locomotive. I'm not even sure if it was made in China, but one locomotive I got like seven or eight that had a bad piece and they, they mm. a broken piece that came with the locomotive. And again, I'm not even sure if it came out of China, uh, but I got the replacement pieces within a couple of months and no one's ever had it. I think it was just the way they were packed or yeah. maybe the way they, they were put in the packaging uh, was just more subject to breaking during shipping, but I've never had a problem since then. And I've never found any, uh, you can always find some, you can always find something somewhere, but I've never had a, a situation where, uh, a particular thing that it came from China that was mm. that was not of good quality. No, no, I've I've got lots of Chinese stuff. It's just it's, it's I'm just curious that whether they actually moved it there or. Uh, yeah, but but no, Mark but, Markman doesn't have that much coming out of China these days. Very mm. very little. Most of mm. it's done in Hungary and and a, and a fair part. If anybody's ever been to Gepping and gone through the factory there, they make a lot of stuff there. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else got any last questions uh, for Robert? We, um, yeah. 
Guy, you... Guy and I have forced him into doing his uh, loco locomotive maintenance and question and answer at another time. So we're oh, I can do that right now. The answers to the questions you submitted, I can do that real quick. The well, answers we're, are we're bit... no, the answers are no, no, yes, 16. And it depends <laughs> on the relative humidity that you have in your house. <laughs> Yeah, so and yeah, we'll have you back for an hour to explain what the what the questions originally were for those answers. Oh, I threw I threw 